Come on in, Emily. Oh, cute. <laughs> Maybe we should milk, milk him first. <laughs> All right, let's bring her in here, and then mom will come looking for her, and we can run her in the chute, and then put the baby out in front of her, like we do with the other one. Come on in here. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Tiger Lily's doing better about not being as concerned with her calf. She left the calf out here in the pasture and came on in to be milked. Now we've got Penny in the chute here for the first her first milking of this year, and we got her baby out here in front of her so she can keep an eye on it so she doesn't get too worried about where it is. As long as she can see it, she's she's gonna be happy. Let's go ahead and get going with this while we while we can. Hey Ben, I'm gonna shovel this crap out of the way real quick. Okay, she's getting a little upset because her baby's running all around having fun playing. Let's see if she's... Okay, and again, just like with Tiger Lily, this first time we milk her, it's been uh, about a day and a half, almost two days. This afternoon has been two days and that calf was born. It's been about a day and a half. Um, and so this is a good time to go ahead and get her all milked out and yeah, it's mostly going to be colostrum milk in there what we're milking out today so we'll go ahead and keep that freeze it for future use mm. that doesn't look good no it doesn't oh. yeah i can tell it's been nursing on this other side Yeah, looks all clumpy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's very thick. Mm -hmm. This quarter may have the starting of mastitis. I don't know. We'll have to see. But we're going to get our California mastitis test out, and we can test it. We need to go ahead and get her milked out. Um, it's very other ones seem to be have nice clear milk I mean it's not it's still got the the uh, yellow color to it but it's it's not all chunky this one's kind of really thick really chunky um, I can tell the calf is not nursed on this side at all yet the other side completely seemed to be milked out but I'm gonna milk out this quarter I'm gonna be careful, try to not I'm gonna keep my hands clean. Try not to cross contaminate this teat to this one or any of the other ones so it doesn't spread the infection. But you can see the difference in the milk already. This one is Still a little bit of a yellow tinge because of the colostrum, but it's loose, it's liquidy. Versus this other one, this other teat was it was really chunky and really thick and gooey and kind of slimy almost. So 
there's definitely something going on with this quarter of her udder and um, it's going to be important that we keep it milked out and that we keep it separate from the other milk and that we see if, uh, we'll see how it goes for a few days she may end up needing some sort of treatment for it um, we'll just kind of see but um, it's a little early on and um, we'll just kind of have to keep an eye on it if we were machine milking right now we would what we would want to do is just hook up these three quarters that were that were good and cap off the fourth suction cup and then milk this one out separately so that it didn't contaminate the other milk this is where sometimes it's nice to have a little longer teats when you're hand milking the sh shorter teats are great for machine milking but they're a little hard when you only get two fingers on them Okay, because <laughs> the baby got that side. <laughs> That's good. a lot in that one. She's got a, a half a gallon so far just in this one quarter. Hmm. Yeah there's like a little bit of blood in here it looks like too so there's definitely something going on. That sucks. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's, that's not good. Mm -mm. Not good at all. It's not good. We use this fight back teeth disinfectant. All right, let's let her out and the kit. Tiger Lily done. Everybody scared? Everybody running for their life? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're getting the bucket off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My... Oh, wait. Just to put the chain under that and take it off. Oh, for her. Wait, no, no, no. Rip is in there. Rip. 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 Get out of there. Rip. Go. So one thing I noticed that uh, when she came in from being out in the pasture is her breath smelt like onion really bad. Which will mean her milk will taste like onion. So that's the problem with this time of year in the spring. The onion grass around here starts to grow really strong and the cows love it. And their breath will about knock you out. And the milk, onion milk is not the greatest thing in the world. so. The only way we could get around that is try to keep them off of the grass, which I hate to do, or wait until it goes away, which will hopefully go away here in the next month or so. But um, that's the battle we have every year. The nice thing about having this all on the concrete and in this area here is we can easily clean off and sanitize in between cows if needed or after we're done milking. Like with the previous cow, we needed to clean it and um, we can easily sanitize it, hose it down, wash it out, works out great. Um, then we got, try to get the stall cleaned up if they've been staying in the stall, which they usually do for the first few days until they get the routine. 
Just like Tiger Lily, she knew exactly what to do, where to go. Today, she was ready to just follow us in here, and she went right in to be milked and left her calf out in the pasture and didn't seem too concerned, but that first few days can be a struggle. That's why it's nice to just keep them close, keep them where you can get to them easily, and you're not having to fight just even trying to get them in here. So in another day or two, we'll go ahead and turn Penny and her calf back out, and uh, we'll bring her and Tiger Lily in together. And, and milk them together and and if the calves come that's great we like to have them come up here too because we can play with them and and uh, keep our hands on them so they're used to being around people and they're friendly the cows are funny about time too is a lot of times if you milk at the same time every day they'll be standing there at the gate waiting for you right at that same time every day because they can somehow they can somehow figure it out so here's some of the colostrum milk that we milked out of penny on her first milking. And now Tiger Lily, we've been milking her for what, four or five days now? And how her milk is nice and white and it's about ready. We can almost start drinking her milk pretty soon, so. But that colostrum is really good stuff to keep. You never know when you might need it. And now that we've gotten her used to being milked again, we milked her last year, she was a cow. And now that we've got her used to being milked again, I have no, no worries about the kids coming up and milking her. The nice thing I like about having her up in this chute too is it elevates her a little bit. The one thing about these miniature jerseys is they are so short that sometimes it's hard to get down low enough to milk them compared to a regular size cow. This props her up about six inches or so, which which is nice, it makes the way you don't have to bend over so much. When you're milking them, she's, be, she's being milked on two sides right now, so she doesn't know which leg to keep forward. But normally, if you were just milking on one side and she had the wrong leg forward with her, I could just tap her leg a little bit. And then, then I've got better access here to milk. A little history about this cow. She is a registered miniature Jersey. And you might wonder like, wow, she's got tiger stripes on her. That's different. I haven't normally seen that with Jersey cows. But uh, there are a few out there that are brindled and have a brindle coat. And um, our miniature uh, Jersey Bull, we have a triple registered miniature Jersey Bull. He's also brindled, just like her. Um, they both come out of the same bull that we, we owned years ago, who was also a brindled bull. And we love this coloring. But she comes from, I think, 11 years of breeding. Uh, she comes from generations of our cows. And it's taken a long time to get to this point. Um, to where we've bred these cows to where we really like their size and temperament and their milk production. And a lot of times with these miniature Jersey cows is it's really hard to find them like this um, for sale. They're just, they're rare, they're hard to find. And if somebody has a really good cow like this, they usually just don't sell it. Or if they are for sale, they're really expensive. Um, and if you're gonna try to breed down or breed to get to this point, it takes a long time. There's no rushing this thing. And, um, and when it comes to buying these cows, you have to be very careful. You have to um, really kind of do your research, know who you're buying it from. Um, there's some people out there that might try to pass a cow off on you that's a young calf and tell you it's a miniature Jersey and it's really not. The miniature Jersey cows, they are great homestead cows. They are a perfect size in my opinion. Um, our cows, we have bred them to be a little bit hardier. Uh, most dairy cows will, they put so much of their energy into milk production, which is great for the dairies, but it's not great for the homesteader. Um, these cows do very well on grass. And usually the only time we go to start feeding them grain is when they're being milked to help keep their milk production up and to help keep them at a healthy weight as well.
You hungry? Oh, you're so hungry. <laughs> Like that milk, don't you? Yeah. Oh. She's gotten good at the bottle. <laughs> Does Penny have mastitis? Stay tuned for our next episode, we'll show you how to use a mastitis test and also the results from using the test. And guess what? We have a need for that colostrum. Let us know how you like these videos in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe and ring that bell. We'll see you next time.